YouTube. There's two of us. Yep. We have uh, one of the other Evos in the fleet. <clears throat> so um, we just wanted to do the breakdown for you so you could, uh, you know, see uh, what uh, Alan's got into his. Alan is the one that's actually editing the videos that you guys are watching. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to give you guys to him and let him go ahead and do the rundown on his car. And, uh, by the way, it's... Um, Got a lot of carbon fiber. <laughs> Shiny. Alright guys, so uh, today we're going to look at my car. This is my 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8. Um, I've had this car eh, going on about 8 years now. Uh, bought it. Fairly stock car. Had about 48,000 miles on it. Uh, hasn't really backed up too many miles on it. I think somewhere now I'm sitting around 87, 88,000 miles on the clock. Uh, as far as it's concerned, as Nate said, uh, I do have quite a bit of carbon fiber on this car. It's kind of one of the themes of the car, black and carbon fiber. Uh, looking at the outside, a couple things. I've got the uh, Sabon carbon fiber hood, the Sabon carbon fiber 10 millimeter wider carbon fiber fenders. Um, I do have an APR uh, front diffuser, which doesn't really go underneath the entire car like APR intended for it. I uh, just kind of modified it a little bit because it made it a little easier as far as it's concerned to get the bumper on and off the car. And in all honesty, this never really goes on an autocross course, road course, so it wasn't really something that I needed the full diffuser effect. I'll be honest, I just kind of like the way that it looked. Um, I do actually have the uh, carbon fiber bumper inserts here on the front too as well. Um, and then if you go look on down the side of the car, I have the Rexby carbon fiber side skirt extensions on the side skirts. And then I also have the Rexby carbon fiber side skirt extensions on the rear bumper. Uh, unfortunately, I'm running the old stock rear bumper. So nothing too exciting there. Uh, I do have a Sabon carbon fiber trunk as well as a Rexby carbon fiber lip as well on the car. Um, as far as like inside the car and everything goes, it is a full interior car. Um, not only on top of that is it full interior, but I do have the have a dual DIN uh, aftermarket CD and DVD player in the car too. Gauges wise on my car, I've got a couple different things here. I've got the uh, Apexi turbo timer, which I really don't even use for a turbo timer. I usually use that more or less for the voltage meter aspect. Uh, I've run in an AEM wideband as well as an AEM um, oil pressure gauge. I do have an AEM 50 PSI boost gauge. It's kind of hiding right down there in the corner. And then I've done a cigarette ashtray pod where I've got an E85 ethanol sensor in there. Um, I don't know, you know, not too much as far as the interior is concerned. It is an SSL car, so it does have the factory leather seats, the factory leather door cards. I have upgraded the steering wheel to an Evo 9 steering wheel, but uh, as you can see, it does have the full factory interior in the car. It's got all your heater controls and everything down there underneath the uh, actual dual din as well too, which is actually kind of surprising. I have a lot of people that actually come up thinking that this car actually has the interior stripped out of it. And as long as I've actually owned it, it's always been a full weight, full interior car. Uh, minus a couple things as far as it's concerned for the turbo kit, which we'll go over here in a second. Uh, it's concerned well entire setup. I'm at running a work emotions. They're the 11 R's. Uh, these are actually a discontinue wheel. They don't make any longer. So they're gunmetal gray. Tire wise, nothing too overly special. They're 18s. They're 255, 35 R18, Fire Sin, Fire Hawk Indy 500s. And I absolutely love them. They've been great. Uh, kind of moving on into the actual engine bay of the car now. Uh, this car is a 2.4 liter aluminum rod motor. Uh, it has a set of JE pistons in it. It's got a set of BME aluminum rods. Um, crank actually is the 100 millimeter OEM crank um, that the typical 2.4 would come from, in like your Eclipses and Galants of that era. Uh, of course, ACL bearings. Uh, I do have the Keeley springs and retainers on there. Um, ITM lifters are what I'm running in lieu of the OEM ones. Uh, when it comes down to like the camshafts, I'm actually running the Kelfer 276 high lift cams, which are the same ones that we've actually put in Mark's Evo as well. Uh, they've done really, really well for me, and I've got no complaints with them whatsoever. Uh, as far as my setup and everything works, I'm running a JM Fab drag 
sheet metal intake manifold going to a Boomba 57 millimeter throttle body. Um, Nate has actually built my upper intercooler pipe. It's three inches all the way from the throttle body down to the four inch anodized black ETS front mount intercooler that I'm running there. Uh, the return side on the lower intercooler pipe is actually a two and a half inch. Uh, as far as it's concerned, my turbo kit is a forward facing kit and it's a full STM hot parts kit. I've got a ceramic coated STM uh, forward facing manifold. The dump tube for the car is also STM which actually goes underneath the car itself. And then, like I said, the lower intercooler pipe is two and a half inches as far as that works out. So, and it's STM as well. Um, O2 housing as well as the downpipe on this car is also STM. Um, turbo wise, I am running a Precision 6466 turbo. It's a uh, T3 to a V-band um, hot side, and it's a .82 AR on the hot side. Uh, I'm running a Precision 46 millimeter wastegate. Obviously, also have the electronic boost controller too, or as Nate likes to say, the I do got. Um, when it comes down to my ignition system, I'm running pretty much the same ignition system as Nate. I've got the uh, JM Fab coil on plug plate with the 300M coils. Um, I've got the Dynatech Arc 2 box as well. Mine isn't inside the car though. I've actually got the mount and everything where it actually sits in here, um, just you know, in the engine bay. Um, GT spec uh, front strut bar. Uh, I've got some Megan uh, Racing coilovers on the car which I do have one that's gone bad too. I need to actually replace on the side on the driver's side, but uh, otherwise they've been you know, pretty good coilovers as far as it's concerned for the cost. Catch cans, uh, as far as my coolant overflow is concerned, I've got, uh, this is one that Nate actually made. It's uh, been really, really good. I've kind of, it kind of took it off the JM Fab design, modified it a little bit, so that instead of it actually coming, you know, from the side right here where the JM Fabs do, it actually connects on the lower end of the, the car. So it kind of cleans things up from the uh, Mishimoto half size radiator that I've got going on here. Uh, big things I've really got deleted off of this car is the ABS and then I've also got the air conditioning deleted. Uh, and the reason being is for two reasons. One, on the ABS I am actually running the STM staging brake kit. So you can't have ABS on that kit. Um, and that's why I really I deleted that. The air conditioning, the fact that it's gone is just because of the forward facing manifold. I do have some uh, plans in the off season to change that where you know maybe put the ABS back on the car as well as doing some things uh, where the air conditioning and other little changes too. On top of that as well I've got uh, a pretty unique catch can setup. It actually originally came off of Nate's and it was actually built by Hytranet RevTech Motorworks. I really like it. It's got uh, a 10 a.m. port that goes to the back of the valve cover. I've got another 6AN port that goes to the actual front of the valve cover and then a 6AN port that actually goes down to the breather hole down there on the front of the block for extra ventilations. Uh, I don't know if some of you may notice, fan-wise, I do run the OEM fan. Um, in my personal experience, there's no fan out there better than the OEM one. Uh, Spa, flex light, whatever you want to call it, the OEM fan, just it works. And I love it. I, I think the most I've ever seen coolant temp wise on my car even after doing pulls and stuff for like 175 176 degrees I do primarily in the summertime run just you know straight water with some water wetter I do have coolant in the car right now because it is winter time here in Idaho and it gets cold I do have though in the actual thermostat housing the Mishimoto racing thermostat uh, fuel wise I have got the Magnus fuel rail with a set of FIC 2150 cc injectors I've run a 8 AN line from the back of the tank uh, to the fuel rail and then I have a 6 AN return which actually splits off right at, right about the fuel line to uh, two 4 AN returns. One goes into the actual fuel pump housing, the other goes to the saddle side of the actual tank itself. And in my fuel tank I'm actually running uh, a Walboro 525 primary and then a Walboro 450 secondary fuel pump. So now moving on to the underside of my car. Uh, my transmission is actually built. This is actually a Bushwhacker transmission. It's an ultimate race or ultimate ratio transmission with a 411 final drive. I do have the little TRE trans cooler on this one as well. So I've got you can see the underside here where you've got the three-inch intercooler piping going into the ETS front mount. Uh, as 
far as everything works out, you've got this little hose here. This actually goes up to the oil catch can, and that's the actual drain tube. Makes it real easy, just a little twist here, opens it up and makes it so everything drains out for you. Uh, going down to my oil pan, now this is one of the things that actually differs from Nate's car too. Nate's car runs the actual more so pan. Um, my oil pan though is something that Nate has modified. Uh, what we've done is we kind of made it to where we have an extra quart uh, capacity. Um, I actually get to where I hold about another quart and a half of oil just because of this extra add-on that we have right here. So kind of a neat little thing that we've done there as far as that works out. Um, going kind of further on down the car itself, uh, like I said, STM downpipe. Uh, one of the neat features about my car that a lot of people don't know that I really, really enjoy is this guy right here. Uh, this is actually a cutout that is made by English Racing. It's got a 60 millimeter wastegate attached to it. I believe it gets right around the area of about 15 PSI when it opens up. And it actually, it, it sounds pretty good. It adds a, quite a bit of little extra noise and everything to it. Um, going back here, exhaust wise, I do run a Busher Racing Catback. Um, it doesn't have any muffler on it. This one is the one that's just resonator only. However, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little too loud as far as it's concerned from my liking, so we do have plans where we're gonna actually add a uh, vibrant muffler to the end of this and an attempt to kind of quiet it down a little bit. The lower control arms on my car have been upgraded to some uh, aluminum lower control arms. I believe they're DD is the company. Um, they've actually been really, really good quality. I've not had any issues with them whatsoever. Um, as you can see, like I said, I've got the uh, Megan coilovers basically all the way around on the car. I've got the stainless steel brake lines coming back as far as it's concerned for the uh, STM staging brake. I mean, for the most part, my braking system stock. I do have the, the stock front and rear Brembo's as far as the calipers are concerned. And then I'm just running some Jordan slotted rotors on the car as well. Uh, another thing stock on my car. Rear diff. Um, my rear diff is actually out of an Evo 9, and a good friend of mine, Jake Montgomery, um, actually plate swapped this rear diff for me. Uh, I've had the car, the diff on there for quite some time, and it's one of those things I need to be upgrading, and it's one of the things that's on my list for you know future replacements. Um, axles, all four corner of the axles on my car, as well as my drive shaft, is still the OEM stock components. Uh, honestly, never broke an axle, never had an issue with the drive shaft, so I've honestly never really had a reason to replace it, so I just have kind of kept it with what it is. Uh, basically, really the only other thing as far as an upgrade I've got on this car right now is my transfer case. Uh, it's a fairly recent addition to the car, but this is a Jack Stage 2 uh, transfer case with the wave track uh, limited slip differential in it. Um, all in all, though, my car is, you know, pretty simple. Uh, you know, I get a lot of people from time to time to sit there and, you know, try to guess really what I've got in this car money-wise. And it's, it's funny to hear some of the numbers that get thrown off, especially when it comes to the motor, because I've got literally next to nothing in the motor. Um, I'm usually pretty good at trying to find ways to kind of cut cost on doing things. Not necessarily cutting corners as far as the quality of the build, but just finding a way to make it cheaper from what makes it work. So yeah, I mean, that's really about the basic rundown of my car there. Um, I mean, other than that, the only thing I think I really left out is uh, tuning-wise. Um, my car is on a AEM version 1 ECU, just like uh, Nate. Uh, both my car as well as Nate's car were tuned by the same gentleman, Jake Montgomery, really good friend of both of ours. So uh yeah pretty much that's it guys so appreciate you tuning in and kind of checking out what i've got going on and we appreciate you guys you know checking out the channel make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and stay in tune for some uh, additional episodes we have coming down the line well and that wraps up this episode here at snellfed performance we appreciate you stopping by and checking out the channel Hopefully you give us a like and subscribe for future updates on Mark's Evo, as well as other projects we have down the line. Have a great day and thanks for coming by.